Welcome to the Airgun Show. This week I'm going to be trying out a brilliant portable shooting bench, but before that we join Andy Watkins as he travels round his permissions trying to make a mixed bag. today on one of my favourite permissions. Now normally I've got a lot more land to roam than I do today because this is the time of year where the pheasants are out so I can't go marching through woodland scattering pheasants because that would not put me in the good books with a gamekeeper. Um, instead I'm just going to be doing a little bit of static shooting. There's a, a small patch of woodland here that I can uh, have a bit of a roam in but really um, I need to be static shooting. Now the landowner has said that there's some squirrels in his garden, so I'm going to target there. Um, they've been in the beech trees after the beech nuts. The gun that I'm going to be using today is a Walther LGU. We've seen this a few times in the previous videos. Nice under lever, very accurate, one of the smoothest guns I've ever shot out of the box. Uh, on top of that I've got a PAO HFT 10x56. Uh, it's got illuminated reticle, but I won't be using that today because it's pretty good visibility. Um, and now, obviously, held on with sports match mounts as normal. Um, this combo should suit this job well. I've mounted the scope as low as possible to the gun, and that way, if there is any cant error, the effects downrange won't be so significant. But enough talking, I'm going to get my kit together and uh, have a look for some squirrels. Oh, that didn't take long. Rounded the corner, there's a squirrel just in front of me. He's a little bit obscured by some twigs, but I'm pretty sure I can thread a pellet through. Well, that seemed to be a good shot. It jumped in the air and dropped backwards. I went for a headshot, so I'm thinking that um, that would just be nerves, him jumping up, so I'm really hoping that squirrel's dead behind there. I'm 99% sure it is. Let's go and have a look. Now I'm hearing there's quite a lot of squirrels around me, I can hear them in the trees. So I'm thinking I might just stop in this little patch of woodland for a while and see if I can get any more. It seems stupid to go somewhere else when there's opportunities all around me here. Sat myself down here. I've got a good view of the trees. So any squirrels that come venturing out, I should be able to get a shot off as long as they stay still long enough. What a great shot. That squirrel went straight down. That's got to be a headshot. It's 
So we've had three squirrels today, not the end of the world, but not my best bag. I'm a little bit disappointed. Normally when I come here, I've had sort of tens and twelves the last couple of weeks. Maybe that's because I've knocked some of the numbers down, or maybe it's just because the squirrels weren't really playing ball. Um, I'm going to come again next week and just keep hammering them, keep trying to, trying to get those numbers down. Um, but it's been an enjoyable day. The sun's been nice and warm. Weather's starting to turn a little bit now, so I'm going to pack it up and, and call it a day. It looks like the rain's coming in. It's the following week now, and I've just popped out to another permission. Uh, I've only got half an hour, three quarters of an hour or so um, here, and then I'm going to head up to a different permission who's got some rabbit problems. Now, here is mainly pigeons and squirrels. Um, this is actually the first time I've ever really visited here, so it's more of a recce than anything, but the landowners told me a couple of things or a couple of locations to look out for and a couple of places to sit. Uh, the weather's coming in now as you can probably hear so I'm going to get under some cover and just sit and wait for some pigeons under a tree. So because this is a new permission and I've never shot here before, um, one of the th first things I want to do is look for any hot spots for pigeons, any signs of pigeons. Now instantly as I was walking through this small patch of woodland I spotted a, a really prominent patch of pigeon droppings. So, the pigeons definitely like roosting up in these trees so I think this will be a half decent place to set up just to get a bit of a lay of the land to start with. Well, that was a cracking shot. Pigeon came in. I've only been studying here about 15 20 minutes. Um, and I just used this bit of log as a rest and took a nice shot at him. I went for a headshot because that's all I could really see clearly and there wasn't any twigs in the way. So I threaded the pellet through and the pigeon just dropped about 25 30 yards in front of me. Nice clean headshot there, which is absolutely perfect. Laser accuracy from that LGU. And you can actually see it's still got bits of uh, ivy in its in its mouth, so it's been feeding off the ivy behind, and it must have just flown up to come and have a bit of a roost and begin to digest its food, and that's where I nailed him. So really happy with that. A nice start to this new permission. Um, the weather's really starting to rain now, the camera's getting soaked, the gun's getting soaked, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up. Um, I'm going to ch chuck all the kit in the car, leave it there, and then as soon as it starts to get a little bit dark, I'll head over to my other permission and get there just as the, just as the, the main sort of daylight's starting to fade, and that's when the rabbit should be out. I'm here at permission number three. The wind is absolutely howling up here. We're on a bit of a hill, so chances are probably not in my favour but I'm still going to give it a good go. I might see a rabbit tucked up under a hedge or something. Um, yeah, but the, the weather just recently has been terrible for any sort of shooting. Everywhere's just been dead. But I'm going to persevere. Um, and I'm going to do my best to, to put a rabbit or two in the bag.
great shot there. That's a 25 meter headshot. Ah. Another one's just come out by the gate. <laughs> oh man, I'm relieved to get those two. I've just driven an hour to get here and I was beginning to think I was going to blank. But, uh, cool, that was a bit of luck. The first one, I threaded it through the, uh, through the fencing, straight through the head, the, the kicking at the end. Um, that's typical of a headshot, it's just the nerves dying down. And then that second one, from the camera, I don't think I could, I could quite get it on the head, but I knew that if I shot it you'd be able to see it go over. Um, I wasn't about to risk losing the shot just for a bit of a better angle. So uh, from where I was I could see the head clearly, um, sent the pellet and rolled him straight over as well. So we've got two dead rabbits down there now. So here we've got rabbit number two. Again, headshot. This, this wind's getting a bit ridiculous. Headshot. Um, there's a lot of blood in the ears, which is typical of a headshot, but like, again, I can't see where the entry wound is. Um, but it was nice and nice and cleanly killed, again, at kick in motion while it was on the floor. And that's just a typical sign of a headshot. Uh, the weather's getting worse and worse, there's a storm coming in, so I'm gonna pack it up now, and without night vision, even shooting, never mind filming in this weather, would be next to impossible. Andy Watkins putting in some miles to make a mixed bag there. And now, it's the Airgun Show News. This is the Airgun Show News. Competitive shooting has received a $10 million boost from the new president of the ISSF. Vladimir Lysin has established a new development fund for the shooting sports and put $10 million of his own cash into the fund to kick it off. The shooting industry is invited to make further contributions. Steel magnate Lyson has been described as one of the richest people in the world, but his contribution will nevertheless mean extra assistance to YSSF federations that need it most. Basque, the Countryside Alliance and the NGO have joined forces to mount a legal challenge against the decision to ban shooting on Welsh public land. They're seeking permission from the High Court to bring a judicial review against the decision. Meanwhile, individual shooters can still have their say by visiting Basque's dedicated website about the ban. Just visit the website on screen to make your views known. Where's your favourite place to shoot? Give it some recognition in the nation's favourite shooting ground award, which is open now. Run by Clay Shooting Magazine, the award focuses on clay grounds, but votes are welcome from all shooters and for any reason. So if you've got a favourite local spot where you shoot both clays and air guns, pick up a copy of Clay Shooting for a voting form, or head to clay-shooting.com slash nfsg. And finally, with voting still taking place in the Great British Shooting Awards, we take a look at a category air gunners should definitely have their say in. It's the Air Gun of the Year Award, and the nominees are Air Arms S510 Ultimate Sporter XS, BSA Defiant, Daystate Red Wolf, Virac HW110 STK, and the Zebroia Hortizia. Which do you think should win? Have your say by heading to greatbritishshootingawards.com. That was the Egg and Show News. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Unless you live close to a shooting range, finding a stable platform for zeroing your air rifle can prove tricky. This week's review product provides a brilliant solution to that age-old problem, and I'm sitting on it. It's the Air Force One Rugged Bench from the Shooting Party, and it costs £119 delivered. One of the best things about the Rugged Bench is the fact that it's portable. 
it folds down flat in a matter of seconds to pack into your car. At around 15 kilos, it isn't exactly lightweight, but I've just carried it around 100 metres to get to here from my car and it was no great strain. Once you've got it to where you want it, it's simply a matter of pulling out the table and seat sections to get it upright. Then all you have to do is use the supplied screw-on plastic knobs to fasten the integral side braces and the seat and it's set up and ready for action. My initial concern was that a folding shooting bench could be a bit wobbly, but it's actually very sturdy, hence the name Rugged. It's constructed from tough square steel tubes that have been treated with a protective coating to guard them from the elements. It looks and feels like a quality piece of kit. The shooting party actually reckons that this setup can support shooters weighing over 21 stones. I'm not much more than 13 stone, but it does feel very strong. It also feels very comfortable. It comes supplied with a foam filled cushion for the seat, so you should be able to put in a pretty long plinking or zeroing session without getting a numb bum. If you want to guarantee absolute pinpoint accuracy, you do need to bear in mind the fact that the seat is connected to the bench. So if you wiggle around, that is going to translate into movement of the gun. What you need to do is have your feet planted firmly to the ground and keep really still as you shoot in order to take absolute advantage of this very stable shooting platform. This setup is great to use with a bench bag to support your gun, but it even comes supplied with a gun rest. That rest attaches very securely to either side of the bench and is also adjustable for height and angle so you can get it positioned exactly how you want to keep your shots dead on target. Apart from the gun rest, the rugged bench also comes supplied with a padded cover for the table. It's kind on your gun and also prevents small accessories and pellets from falling through the rigid mesh that makes up the main platform of the table. It's also equipped with two decent sized accessory pockets on either side, so you can keep all of your range essentials close to hand. When you've finished shooting, this bench is as easy to pack away as it is to set up. Simply remove those three screw on plastic knobs, remembering to put them somewhere safe, and then fold down the table and seat sections to make the whole thing flat. Having it flat makes it very compact for storing either in your shed or garage, as well as making it easy to carry and to pack into your car. So, that's the Air Force One rugged bench from the shooting party. It's a brilliant piece of kit that creates a stable shooting platform wherever you want it. Plus it's fairly compact for carrying and for storage. It should be brilliant for zeroing and plinking, either in the garden or out on your permissions. Plus I can already think of one or two farms where I'd like to set it up to create a super stable platform for rat shooting. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine. Pack full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and from myself and the rest of the team, enjoy the rest of your festive break and have a very happy new year. As ever, please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.